Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Gojoe, a Japanese fantasy action drama from 2000 that was directed by Sogo Ishii and stars Daisuke Ryo, Tadanobu Asano, Masatoshi Nagase, and Jun Kunimura. It's a pretty fantastic cast, and since we've been in a little Sogo Ishii kick lately on this channel, I figured it would be an interesting rewatch to revisit this film. And as it turned out, Gojoe was even better than I had remembered. This is actually a really cool movie. After the apparent defeat of the Genji in the War for Japan, a demon lurking at the Gojoe Bridge in Kyoto kills every Heike warrior who tries to cross it. Meanwhile, Musashibo Benke, played by Daisuke Ryo, a samurai turned Buddhist monk, receives a divine message informing him that he must slay this mysterious demon. Borrowing a sacred sword, he sets out on his quest. At the scene of one of the murders in Gojoe, he meets a scavenger, played by Masatoshi Nagase, a former weaponsmith who now survives from looting corpses, as well as a young mystic named Shanao, played by Tadanobu Asano. Now, over the years of watching movies, one of the things I've noticed is that it's usually pretty interesting when a director who is not known for a certain subgenre comes in and tackles that subgenre. One example would be uh, Ho Chung Pang, who was not known for horror movies, but came in to direct Dream Home back in 2010, which was one of the better horror films from the last uh, 10 plus years. Another, perhaps more relevant example is my favorite director, Shinya Tsukamoto, who was never really known for directing samurai movies, but decided to direct Killing a few years ago, which feels very different from the typical samurai film. And the scene can be said with Gojoe. It just feels different from most period or samurai films out there. And a lot of that has to do with the director, Sogo Ishii. I think the director in this case kind of combined uh, the different elements that were prevalent at different points in his career. So this has kind of like the hypnotic characteristics of Labyrinth of Dreams or August in the Water, but it also has some of the more energetic elements of his uh, earlier films. So we get kind of the best of both worlds here. Gojoe is, it's not really like a pristine, neat samurai film. It has more of like a tribal aspect to it, which gives it a certain energy. The sword fight, uh, fights, they back up this particular style that Ishii is going for. You know, these fights, what I like to see is something like Rurouni Kenshin or some of the old school samurai films where you got wide shots, you can see everything real clearly. Ishii does not always do that here. There are certain points in the film where there's going to be close-up shots, um, a moving camera, you know what I mean, some flashy imagery and stuff like that. But I think similar to the Korean film, Moose of the Warrior, I think that works for this film. Now, there are some pretty brutal deaths in this, and that's, that's kind of what makes some of these sword fights really satisfying, is that you might have the wide shots, you might have the close-up camera work, he mixes it up, but you're usually treated to a pretty solid death scene, or many, <laughs> in any, any one of these sword fights, and that, uh, that definitely gives the, the fights a certain satisfaction uh, level. Now, the film actually opens with a decapitation scene, just to let you know what you're in for. So there is enough swordplay carnage to, to satisfy here. Most interestingly, there's also a lot of spell casting in this movie, which gives it a mystical vibe as well. You know, at one point our protagonist needs to travel through like a, a devil woods forest or whatever, and you have to have a certain mindset while traveling through the forest, otherwise you might be possessed by spirits. There's a little bit of that in here too. The characters in this movie, most of them are badasses. That's how I would describe most of the characters in this film. I mean, there's scenes where you say to yourself, yeah, I would not want this dude coming after me. You know what I mean? So I, I like characters like that in movies like this. And their interaction is pretty engaging. Maybe even a little bit unpredictable in spots. I mean, you, by the time you get to the 90 minute mark, you know, the, the main plot is kind of done. But then you're like, well, what? where else is this movie going to go? We still got some time left here. And it goes into some interesting directions that I, I quite liked. There is some interesting script writing in this. There is, uh, there's some pretty good dialogue in spots. And dramatically, 
I like how some where some of these characters go. You're not really sure how they're going to end up at the beginning of the film. Cinematography is excellent. It's a Sogo Ishii film. Uh, natural environments are really nice. You get some forests, streams, waterfalls that are nice. It's very atmospheric. Costumes and set designs are convincing. The music is neat. You know, again, you get the hypnotic stuff, but you also get some percussion during some of the more uh, exciting action-based moments. I would say there's like maybe three sword fights, uh, sword fight set pieces in this, and they're all pretty satisfying, I think. But it isn't like an all-out action flick. Like I said, this movie—it's a Sogo Ishii film. It's going to be a little different, man. You know, if you watched 20 samurai movies, I can almost guarantee that. 19 of them are not going to be like this one, <laughs> you know. Uh, the runtime is over two hours, but I actually think this movie's paced well. I think it justifies its longer runtime. Um, I, I just, this recent viewing, I just was really engaged and kind of absorbed in everything that was happening because it's, it's just so unique of a film. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to describe exactly why if you haven't seen a Sogo Ishii film. If you have... You're, you're, I think you're, you'll be happy with this. So again, if you're a fan of Japanese samurai films or period films, and you want something a little different, I strongly recommend Gojo A. It's very entertaining and memorable. Uh, a little weird, <laughs> but, you know, just it's different. It's currently available on physical media. And as always, I will see you next time.